Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspectives in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael, may God protect may God protect our brave soldiers, and may God return all the hostages from Gaza immediately. This week's Parsha Perspectives in honor of the Rafu Shalema of Rav Amitai, Ben Shoshana, and all those who need to experience a speedy and complete recovery. This week's Parsha Perspectives in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Rachmila Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This upcoming Tuesday is the 3rd of Tammuz, which marks 30 years since the passing of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, a blessed memory. Traditionally, this is a day for reflection, recommitment, and overall positive action. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Kairach, You Are the Light. Our Parsha begins with Kairach, a rich and influential man from the tribe of Levi, staging a rebellion against Moshe and his brother Aaron Akoyin. Together with a few ringleaders, he gathers 250 men and accuses Moshe and Aaron of nepotism and power hoarding. They took specific issue with Moshe's appointment of his brother Aaron as a Kohen Gadol as the high priest. Furthermore, they argued that since the entire Jewish nation was holy, there was no need for any person to be higher than the other, and therefore Moshe Rabbeinu's position did not have to be there. He did not have to be the leader of the Jewish people. In response, Moshe proposed that they participate in a test the next day, and this would determine who indeed was chosen by God to be the high priest, to be the Kohen Gadol. Everyone would bring the Keturus offering, an incense offering in the Mishkan, and God would make his choice known. God was immensely angered by the nation's association with Karach and wished to destroy them. But Moshe and Aaron prayed for the Jewish people, and therefore the decree was averted. Instead, God made the earth open up and swallow Korach and all of his allies whole. Yet Korach's punishment did not stop the others from continuing to rebel against Moshe and Aaron. So God instructed Moshe Rabbeinu about the test of the sticks. A leader from each tribe would write their name upon a stick, and those sticks would be placed overnight in the holies of holies. And the staff and the stick that blossomed and bloomed with any growth or vegetation would be recognized as God's chosen leader. So Moshe gathered a stick from each tribe and placed them overnight in the Kodesh Kedoshim, in the Holies of Holies, as God instructed. The following day, all the leaders gathered around as Moshe Rabbeinu retrieved their staffs, retrieved their sticks. Needless to say, only Aaron's stick had blossomed miraculously with ripe almonds. And this test demonstrated decisively that Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron Akain were both chosen and elected leaders by God, by Kodesh Baruch Hu. However, a question comes to mind. Following the clear demonstration of God's choice for high priest, the Jewish people lamented to Moshe Rabbeinu. They said, avanu kulanu avanu. They perished. We are lost. We are all lost. The nation feared being in the Mishkan's vicinity and worried about the punishment for entering a restricted area. They tell Moshe Rabbeinu, Kol hakariv hakariv el mishkan Hashem yamus ha'im tamanu l'gvoya. Anyone who comes close to God's mishkan dies, we are all doomed to perish. What sparked such panic and worry about coming too close to God? Why was the Jewish people afraid to even enter the area surrounding the mishkan? The Ibn Ezra, Rav Avram ben Meir Ibn Ezra, gives a simple explanation. He answers that while unfortunate, the nation's anxiety about coming too close to God, too close to the Mishkan, was justified. They had just witnessed two separate punishments demonstrating God's power, God's strength. They saw the earth open up and swallow Karach and his allies without warning, without escape. They watched as thousands died offering the Keturus offering, the incense offering, without God's permission, without God's approval. According to the Ibn Ezra, the doom they predicted the dread they felt matched the two tragedies they just saw and they just experienced. The Jewish people did not know how to approach, how to come near the Mishkan without feeling afraid for their lives. And so in response, God directs the tribe of Levi to stand guard around the Mishkan, to be there at all times as a visible deterrence, 
and a reminder to the nation of the surrounding area's holiness. However, the Orach HaMakadosh of Chaim Ben Attar, a Moroccan commentary and Kabbalist, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that the worry, that the anxiety came from a lack of understanding how to connect with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, how to connect with God. The nation viewed the relationship with God in a binary manner. Either they were like Moshe Rabbeinu, righteous, holy, and able to speak with God at any moment. Like Arnakain, devoted to the divine, to the sacred service of God in his physical home. Or heaven forbid the opposite, relating to God in just a superficial and shallow manner. A connection with no depth, no significance, lacking meaning, lacking enthusiasm. The Yorach HaMakadosh explains that God always related to the people, demonstrating His passion and His affection for the nation. God did miracle after miracle for the Jewish people with no reason other than telling the world who He has chosen to represent Him here on earth. While some Jews understood how to communicate their gratitude to Kodesh Baruch Hu, to God, many viewed the relationship as binary, either one or the other, no compromise, no growth. Either they had it or they did not, with no space to develop their relationship with God. But God does not relate to our world in a binary manner. His energy ebbs and flows to match our actions. God increases His power. God increases His Spirit as we develop the capacity to make it our reality. He changes our perspective as we fulfill our godly potential and bring heaven down to earth. This profound lesson by the Arach HaMakadosh is ever more relevant as we approach Gimel Tamas, a day that challenges our perception, a day that challenges our emotions. What does a connection to the Lubavitch Rebbe mean today? Where does one even begin to understand what happened on Gimel Tamas? How are we meant to feel on such a day? And while there are many right answers, many paths one could take, one thing remains unchanged. The Rebbe's mission. Since assuming leadership on the 10th of Shvat in 1951, the Rebbe's objective has been clear. To infuse divine light into this dark world. The Rebbe illuminated the paths of countless of individuals, offering spiritual guidance, inspiration, and unwavering dedication. His teachings and actions continue to infuse our lives with holiness, bringing us closer to our Father in Heaven, to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. The Rebbe challenges each of us to join his mission by adding even the simplest little pieces of light, by doing even the smallest of mitzvahs, and thus prepare our world for the coming of Mashiach and the ultimate redemption. I will conclude by quoting the last Hasidic discourse that Lubavitch Rebbe gave out called the Atta Tzave. A tzaddik brings you to discover who you truly are. You are light. If the times are times of light, he can awaken you to know that light. If the times are dark, he can squeeze out the pure oil within you and set you afire so that you become the bright light in the darkness. Have a meaningful Shabbos and inspirational Gimel Tamas. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.